Jesus is the answer for the world today. Hi, and welcome to Christian Pentecostal Church Daily Devotion. I'm Pastor Jeremiah, and I welcome you today. Let's break forth the, the word of life because that's important. Well, today's word of life is found in Matthew chapter 5 and through, you know, verse 1 through 12, and it's entitled, The Character of Christ, The Character of Christ. You know, I got a chance to visit Jerusalem, and I went to the Sermon on the Mount, or rather when he preached it, it was the actual Mount, and I was intrigued. How did he reach so many people, you know, just speaking? He had no amplification, as we know, no mics and all these other things. And there were people around, but yeah, I took a shot and uh, I shouted as loud as I could, blessed are the poor in spirit. And you could see why, because tr sound travels downward. And so it was easy for them to hear. But what's interesting is that the Bible tells us that when Jesus saw the multitude, he actually climbed up to the mountain. So he actually saw them from afar. He looked and he went right through the crowd or maybe went up the other way, however it was. And he sat there. And the Bible says his disciples came and gathered around him, which is the usual uh, tradition that the rabbis will sit and the disciples will come and sit with him and they would listen to him. Well, it tells us, and he opened his mouth and began to teach them. And he said, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the sons of God. And blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and say all kinds of manner of evil, all manner of evil against you falsely because for my sake. He said, rejoice and be glad. For in this, watch this. Rejoice and be glad because as great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. And as you read the Sermon on the Mount, it just keeps going. And actually, I found 22 compartments, 22 slices, if I want to call it, where Jesus spoke 22 things for us to understand. Some says 19, some says 18, but as I begin to study, I found 22. And when you look at the Sermon on the Mount, it's beautiful how he ends it. He says, Therefore, those who listen to these words of mine and puts them into practice will be like the wise man who built his house upon the rock. He says, the storms came, the winds came and beat upon the house. Everything came against that house, he says, but it did not fall because it had its foundation built upon the rock. He said, but everyone who hears these words of mine, talking about the Sermon on the Mount, and does not put them into practice will be like a wise man who built his house on the sand. The winds came, blew against us, the rain came, and then it says, and the house had a great crash. You see, I learned something about the Sermon on the Mount. You don't find the word salvation there, or deliverance and all the other things that we speak about. Because it's the principles of the kingdom. It was talking about the character of Christ, who He is. Remember, the Bible tells us even when He opened His mouth, blessed are the poor in spirit. The Bible says that Jesus, who was rich, left the riches of heaven and came down here. He left the riches of heaven and became poor, that we through His poverty might become rich. So in essence, we talk about Christ would give His life for us. But he puts it in a way that he says, look, if you have the Spirit of God living in you, it's because you realized that you are bankrupt. Without Christ, we are bankrupt. We have nothing. If you mourn because of the sin of this world, he says, there's going to come a time when you're going to be comforted because I'm going to take you out of it. He says, blessed are the meek. You know, we talk about the meek here. And remember, meek is not weak. Meek means humble. The Bible tells us in Philippians uh, chapter 2, verse 5, it says, Let this mind which was in Christ also be in you. Wow. A simple attitude of humbleness. You are great, and I am nothing compared to you. Now, he says that the meek shall inherit the earth. Yeah, when Christ comes back and everything is done, and God does away with this world, 
and builds a new one, a new heaven. And the light of that world is not going to be the sun. It's going to be Christ himself. And we will inherit that earth because we've been meeked. Watch this now. And then he says, Blessed are they who hunger and thirst after righteousness. Well, what does that mean? The righteousness of God is seen very much in the word of God. Hebrews chapter 5 tells us that those who preach milk know nothing about the righteousness of God in the word. So it's one thing to know milk. It's another thing to understand the principles of God's doctrine that makes us righteous. But then he said, blessed are the merciful. And let me tell you something. Mercy simply means this. You should die, but I'm going to give you life. You should have nothing, but I'm going to give you everything. You see, that's God's mercy. He says, but if you're merciful that way, you will receive mercy. Then he says, blessed are the pure at heart. This is my favorite scripture concerning my life because I want to see God's purity in my life. The Bible says, without holiness, no one can see the Lord. I told my wife many times, if I go before you on my tombstone, I want you to put Matthew 5, 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. You don't even have to put my name. I want them to see that, that, that scripture. When people are visiting their dead and they happen to pass by mine, they'll read it and maybe get saved or get convicted. So remember, without purity of heart, you can't see God. Then it says, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Folks, we're called to go into confusion and disperse the darkness. To take that which is affliction and speak peace. Let me tell you something. The effect of righteousness is peace. If you do what is right, it ushers in peace. That's why our world is so much in confusion, so lost. Why? Because we're not seeking the peace of God. We're not looking at His righteousness. If we did, we would have a world that would be much peaceful. Well, then it says, blessed are you when you are persecuted for righteousness sake. Let me tell you something. Sometimes and many times when you say something that is right or you do something right, you think that people are going to applaud you. Well, not necessarily. Some people say, by you doing right, you exposed my wrong. <laughs> by you saying what you said, you exposed something in my life, and I don't like it. And then he goes on to bring it home. And blessed are you when people revile you. They hate you. And they persecute you because of that righteousness. And they speak all manner of evil against you because of that righteousness. He says, rejoice rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Why? Because great is your reward in heaven. Oh, let me tell you something. Paul said this concerning the crown of righteousness. He says, my time has come. I finished the race. I have fought the good. I have kept the faith. I fought the fight. I had a good fight, but it's time for me to go home. And then he says this, I know that what awaits me is a crown of righteousness. Why? Because he preached the gospel and he did not commit himself to the world, and he did not desert the truth. He was fully committed to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he said, now that what's laid up for me is a crown of righteousness. And I tell you something, there are five crowns in the Bible. I believe that crown is mine. I believe, I believe by faith because I love righteousness. That's why I teach the word through righteousness. I want to see God's righteousness shine in the earth. And then he says this, be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. And I want to conclude with this. Sometimes you feel like you're alone. I'm suffering. I'm all alone in this world. I want to let you know there were people who were before you who suffered the exact same thing that you're suffering. But listen, if you're going to suffer, don't suffer for being a meddler. Don't suffer for being a thief. If you're going to suffer, suffer because you have the Spirit of Christ on you and the glory of God is shining through you and that righteousness is being manifested through your life by what you say and by what you do. Blessed are you if you do all these things. God bless you. Have a wonderful spiritual day. Amen.